Jan Brewer is the former Republican governor of Arizona. She was often in the headlines for what critics called her hardline approach to immigration and border security. She's a supporter of Donald Trump for president and said through a statement at the time of her endorsement, this may be our last chance to ensure our children grow up in a country with borders. But one area where she appears to differ with the GOP's presumptive nominee is on the merits of Common Core education standards. She's an advocate for Common Core, which was developed by governors and state education departments and is currently in use in 43 states and the District of Columbia. She also advocates for groups dedicated to ensuring that military families have access to the best possible education despite a life of moving from assignment to assignment, state to state. Governor Brewer joins me from Phoenix. We'll talk about military education advocacy in a bit. But first, I want to ask about Donald Trump and the giving of funds to the military. You grew up on a military base. You're a strong supporter of veterans. What's your reaction to questions about Trump's follow-through, denouncing the press as dishonest, yet he claimed to have raised an excess of $6 million. He didn't give his own $1 million until The Washington Post wrote a story that he hadn't given it. What's your reaction to that overall story? Well, I thought it was overblown, and I thought it was outrageous the way the press uh, portrayed it. My goodness, he, you know, he raised all this money uh, for the veterans. They are very, very appreciative of it. And I, what did they think that he was going to do, you know, keep it in his sugar jar? It just doesn't make any sense. And so he's a big supporter of the veterans, of which I am, and I think the veterans are big supporters of him. And... Um, I think the liberal press is just taking him apart constantly. Did it bother you at all that he didn't give the million until the Washington Post said he hadn't given it? No, I wouldn't have bothered me if he hadn't even given a million. And he's got more coming, Larry. I mean, why doesn't why doesn't the press give him credit for what he's done? Would you say there's never been a candidate like him? I would say there has never been a candidate like him, ever. Are you concerned? He has, he has lit the world on fire. Yeah. Have you, are you concerned about this case of Trump University? Attorney General in New York is after him. They say that the whole thing was just no, a sales I, gimmick. I am not How do concerned. you react to that? Well, I'm just not concerned about it, Larry. You know, I always was raised, and I think most of us, buyer beware. The bottom line is, is people have to take responsibility for themselves. And in my opinion, it was simply uh, a school that was advertised, marketed, and people decided they wanted to participate. But on top of that, they have dozens of letters from very satisfied people. Should Donald release his tax returns? You know, I, I, that's a fair uh, question. I don't know how much that's going to prove. When you have that much money, I, you know, we know he probably has family trust. He's probably got additional LLCs. How are you going to track all of that? Even with my little simple returns, it's difficult. You know, I don't care about that. What I care about with Donald is his, his uh, economic growth uh, policies, his job creation policies, immigration, the military. Those are the things that are important to us. Over the Memorial Day holiday... And I don't agree with Donald on everything. I know we're going to talk about Common Core you don't agree. We'll talk about that in a minute. Over the Memorial Day holiday, he repeated his uh, assertion that illegal immigrants get better care than American veterans. Do you agree with that? I do. Absolutely. Uh, illegal immigrants come in here, they get... Transition. They get shelter. They 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 use our education. They use our health care in Arizona alone. And the illegal immigration in a year is almost two billion dollars that we are all paying for. And then we have the poor veterans that have no uh, attention whatsoever at all about transition, access to doctors. Uh, it just the list goes on and on. They just stand in line. And we, if anybody deserves our attention, it's our veterans, the people that are out there, our heroes that keep us safe. There are still many in the, not many, but quite a few, let's say, in the GOP not endorsing him. Do you think they'll come around? Where are they going to go, Larry? Uh, 
They, uh, you know, he's our nominee. He has struck a chord with the public. Um, he, you know, you don't ever agree 100% with the candidate, but I think that when you look at the economy and job creation and immigration and the military, the majority of people believe that those things need to be addressed, and he's going to do it. John McCain, your senator, is not going to the convention, should he? Well, you know, I would love to have John McCain there. I would love to have everybody there. I'm going to be there and looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. You think Donald would ever apologize to McCain about the line about prisoner and war hero? I don't know. I, yeah, I know. I, I think that everybody's beyond that at this point in time. I know John McCain kind of takes it with a grain of salt, but, um, yeah, he you does. know, I think John McCain is an American war hero. Okay, now even North, Car North Korea and, and Vladimir Putin are kind of endorsing <laughs> Donald. What do you make of this? <laughs> what do you make of this whole remarkable thing? <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's just uh, <laughs> strange, but not unusual in this election season. <laughs> you said you're Maybe willing they to... think that uh, if they do that, he won't win <laughs> because they've endorsed him. I don't know what their plan is, but to me, it's odd. You said you'd be but willing I to... I think that Donald has been very strong. You said you'd be willing outspoken to... outspoken in regards to both of them. You said you'd be willing to run with him. Has any discussion taken place? Um, and not, no, and no discussion. I just know that I'd be willing to uh, help Donald in any way uh, to become president of the United States, any way that I could possibly be of help, I would be willing to serve him. Because his, uh, Paul Man Manafort, his campaign manager, said it's unlikely he'd pick a woman or a minority because it would look like he was pandering. You agree with that? <laughs> well... I, I don't know. I don't think Donald is one that panders, do you? <laughs> no, I, I, mm, I rarely. <laughs> he's got a great list of people that uh, he can choose from that would serve him well and that I would be happy with, and I think the American people would be happy. So I'm going to leave that up to him. So far, he hasn't disappointed me. In uh, let's areas. talk about military education. All American kids should get the okay. best education possible. You say the children of U.S. military families particularly need high, consistent education standards because they move around so much? Is that I, it? Absolutely, Larry. Uh, I got involved in politics because of my children's education. I was concerned, and for the last 35 years, I've tried to do something about it. So when I was governor, I enacted what we call um, uh, the Common Core or Arizona College and Career Ready, and I think that we need a basic baseline standard in math and English that we can compare across state lines. Arizona has multiple Air Force bases. We've got career, military, uh, enlistees and officers and their families that are now refusing to take advances because they don't want to move their kids into another school district into another state that doesn't equal the state they're moving from. Either they move there and they're way behind and they're just, uh, they can't catch up, or they so, move there, and they're so far advanced, they're just wasting their time. So why not? So they're uh, refusing. And if anybody uh, should, be, should be concerned about education, it should be the military, and we should be concerned about those families and their children, because they do move about, and they make a big sacrifice. But all the brouhaha about Common Core was, you know, discontinued when the Congress passed the ESSA, ESSA legislation, the Ever Student Success uh, uh, Act, and it uh, is, is kind of defunct now because it was all about that money, so the argument is gone. And who can argue with the basic standard of math and English standards that we can judge our kids by. It's the only, it's the right thing to do. We compete globally. I agree. Uh, Trump doesn't like Common Core. That's Good. an area where you disagree. He called it well, a disaster. Well, I'm going to try to talk to him about right. that. I th and he's a good listener. He's a good listener. All right. But it's I a have, buzzword. I think it's a buzzword. What I've never understand is liberals have always asked for a national standard in education. Conservatives have said, leave it up to the states. And I've often wondered, 
Why should a child in, say, Mississippi get a lesser education than a child in California? So why not national standards? Bingo, because they want local control is what they say. But, with you, but each state would just establish their baseline standards and then if you go to another state, they can raise those standards, but at least we'd have the baseline across our country so we would know where our kids are, do, are, are fearing with the other uh, states. It's absolutely imperative, it's important. You think young American women should be required to register with Selective Service as men do? If we have a draft, should women be drafted? I don't know, I haven't really ever given that much thought. Uh, you know, I figure if they want to enlist, they can enlist. Uh, we don't have a draft for our young men today, so that's kind of hypothetical. We have lots of women. I'm very proud of them. We have a lot of women pilots in Arizona. Why do we? Why do you think... Very competent. Why do you think historically, and this is true of both Republicans and Democrats, that once a veteran comes home, they tend to be neglected? Why is that? That's occurred through many I presidents. I have no idea. I, I, I never figured that it out. It's unfortunate. And the bottom line, Larry, is that we should give them every possibility that we can possibly give them to help them come back and assimilate into society here, uh, in their home states or wherever they decide to move to, and their families. And you know, it's not just the military servicemen and women, it's their families, it's their wives. The most unemployed group of uh, unemployed is American uh, servicemen and women because they're moving around too. Couple of other things. I mean, we deserve that. We, yeah, uh, I agree completely. Uh, Couple of other things. Uh, I you, knew you were a smart guy. You miss being governor? I, sometimes, I, you know, I initiated a lot of new policies and I would have liked to have seen them follow through uh, according to the way that I had visualized them. But no, I'm busy, I'm loving what I'm doing now too, but it was an honor, truly an honor to be governor. Uh, you know, elected official uh, for so many years and to end up as the governor of the great state of Arizona was an honor that um, is almost indescribable. During very rough times, by the way. I know. Great talking to you, Janice. See you in Cleveland. All right, Larry. Yeah.